Should I take it? <laughs> it's my wife. Just hung up on her. Sorry, love. If it rings again, it's important. I better take it. So let's go through the four keys for getting a high-performing scorecard campaign so you can sort out lead generation once and for all. So the first thing is the landing page. And a really important part of the landing page is giving your scorecard a name. You want to name that scorecard. And the name should be based upon the desired outcome that your customers want to achieve. So what we talked about a little bit before, what is your customer's desired outcome? And you want to think about putting yourself in the customer's shoes and asking to complete this sentence. I really want to be blank, I really want to have blank, or I really want to experience blank. How cool is the book title from Stephen Bartlett? Happy Sexy Millionaire. Oh my God, is there a better book title in the world than Happy Sexy Millionaire? Because what do people want to have? What do people want to become? It sounds pretty good, right? So he knows exactly how to create a good name because it's based on a desired outcome. So anything that has a name can be turned into a scorecard. I really want to be ready to pitch some investors. Great, let's do the pitch readiness scorecard. I really want to have business growth. Cool, do the business growth scorecard and get your customized report. I really want to experience more financial clarity. Fantastic, why don't we do the financial clarity scorecard? Right, so you've got more financial clarity. Another way of saying this is also, are you ready to begin something new? Are you ready to start something? So let me give you some examples there. Are you ready to run a marathon? Take the scorecard and find out. Are you ready to increase your prices? Take this scorecard and find out whether you could increase your prices. Are you ready to sell your home for the most amount of money? Take this scorecard and find out whether your home is in a condition to sell for the most amount of money. Are you ready to win an award? Take this scorecard and see if you're likely to win an award. Just one or two minutes and then we'll tell you whether you're award ready. So these are examples of are you ready to get this thing done? Uh, here's an example. Are you ready to have success with MS? Hugely successful scorecard from Karen Dwyer. For people who've got MS, they want to know whether they can get their life the way they want it. Now, you don't have to necessarily call it a scorecard. You could call it a quiz, an assessment, a test, an indicator. Any of those sorts of things will work as well. So I want you to have a go at this. What would you call your scorecard to attract your ideal clients? What, do you, what would you call your scorecard? Okay, who has got a scorecard name? What would yours be? Are you ready to get wired for wealth? Rewired for wealth scorecard, I love it. Yeah, what was yours called? The visibility scorecard. So how visible are you? Can you improve your brand visibility? Love it. Yeah, I'm curious to know how that works. Yeah, what's yours? Abolish fatigue scorecard. Are you ready to abolish fatigue through great nutrition? Take this scorecard. Fantastic, and one last one over there, yep. Are you ready to be a great leader? Nice, simple question. Take the scorecard, find out. So you've got the, you've got the a good starting point. You can always come up with three or four titles and test on social media. You can run a poll on Twitter or on LinkedIn. Before you commit to a, a name of your scorecard, I strongly recommend go on LinkedIn, ask people, I'm thinking of launching a book or I think I'm launching a, an online assessment. Do you think I should call it A, B or C? get them to vote, do a little poll, get people engaged, get a little bit of buy-in first. Once you choose your name, then it's very simple. We've got dozens and dozens of beautiful templates. You pick an aesthetic that you like and you just work from that. You can drag and drop photos straight into it. So you're essentially just looking for a design and layout that you, and then you just start editing it. So you might pick a scorecard like this. It's already gonna have questions in there. It's already gonna have copy in there. So you're just editing what's already in there. It's pretty much a cut, paste, and edit job at that point. So the next thing you need to think of is the questionnaire. The questionnaire is a series of questions that people need to answer, nice simple questions, in order to see whether they're on track or off track to achieving the desired outcome that they have. You could think of it as a pretty much a simple checklist. For example, the visibility scorecard might ask, Things like, have you published a blog on LinkedIn? Have you done anything to improve your search engine optimization? Have you put a video on YouTube? So these are things that people could do to improve their visibility. So it's a bit of a dynamic checklist. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And you go through and you put your checklist together. 
So you want to keep it simple. You want things that are simple to answer without having to check. And you want something that can be improved, right? You don't want to ask people things that they can't change or can't improve, right? You want to ask things, ideally things that you can help them with, right? That you help them to improve. Those are the best types of things that you can talk about. So I'll give you some examples from my one. Do you give talks, trainings, and presentations and speeches? Right, so it's pretty simple. If somebody Googled your name, would they find most of page one is positive links featuring you? Are you featured in the media more than a few times each year? So these are simple yes or no questions. You don't have to think terribly hard about them. But you notice that each one of those creates that little bit of tension. Oh, actually, I should be doing a bit more of that. Okay, I should, maybe I should do some of that. So we go through and we tick, 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 tick. So one thing you may want to think about is how many questions do you need? <clears throat> so there's three answers to this. If you want to generate leads, then and especially from cold traffic like advertising or a joint venture with somebody else's list or through social media engagement, you want to keep it nice and short, seven to 12 questions so that you get fast leads coming in. And that's just like leads coming in Lots of people who go, one minute, seven questions, it's a nice, it's a lead. You can start from there. If you want to get conversions, you want 20 to 50 questions. Now, conversions is where you actually have plenty of people engaging with you, but you need to convert from interest to a sale. For example, let's say you've already got a social media following with 10, 20, 30,000 people. You've got lots and lots of people who know who you are, but now you want to turn some of those into sales. 20 to 50 questions. They trust you enough to go and do 20 to 50 questions with you, and that's going to give you lots of data to help you to make a sale. So for me personally, that's where I focused my energy. I had the key person of influence books. I had videos. I had podcasts. I had all this stuff that was out there, but I needed a way for people to go from consuming content to engaging in a meaningful way, and then we could talk to people about how to improve their score. So I needed... 40 questions in order to capture enough information for us to do a really good sales conversation. And then if you want happy clients, 50 to 100 questions. Now, here's how this works. On day one, when you sign up a new client, you get them to do the full 50 to 100 question questionnaire on day one, and it's all the possible ways that you could help them. Have you done this? Have you done this? Have you got one of these in place? Have you got this document in place? Have you done this thing? Have you done this thing? Do you measure this? Do you track this? Do you do this? Now, here's the fun part. When they then give that back to you, you spend the next six months fixing all the things they said no to, and then at the end of six months, they take it again, and they go, oh, my goodness, you moved from a 17% to a 76% in six months. I need to give you referrals. I, I'm so happy because I can quantify and see how far you measured, moved me in just a short space of time. So you could think of this as almost an MOT, right? You do an MOT on day one, and then you revisit it six months in, and people are very happy. So the question I've got for you is if you're going to start this process, do you want to start with lead generation, quick snappy leads? Do you want better conversions? You've already got some engagement. Or do you want happy customers where you want to use it in that particular way? So have a quick think. What would you use this for? Would it be leads, conversions, or happy customers? OK. Just for my feedback, can I get a little bit of feedback? Who sees the most potential in this for leads, that you want to use it for lead generation? OK, great. Who wants to enhance their conversions? Great. And who wants to do, use it with a customer who's already signed up to improve the journey? Fantastic. So it's about half and then 25 25%. Cool. OK, so as I said, you've got the templates there. When you choose a template, it will already have questions built in. And those questions are just, it shows you the types of questions you could ask. You've got to be a little bit creative and go through and edit each of those questions. So you've got to make it your own. Unfortunately, you're going to have to sit down and do a little bit of creativity with this and just plug in the types of thinking and the types of questions that, that you've got. But these questions are here just to give you a bit of a prompt to show you examples of what kind of questions could work. Now, you can do sliding scale questions, you could, like on a scale of one to five. You can do multiple choice questions with different points associated for each of the multiple choice. So results is the next part. So we've asked questions. Now we want to do results. What we want to do 
is we want to showcase some authority, some insight, and really, this is the big reveal, right? This is why they agreed to answer the questions in the first place. So this is where you reveal, now you've answered these questions, here's what we can tell you about yourself. So what's cool is that it's going to display this in several different ways. You can have pie charts, you can have a thermometer, you can have a speedometer, you can have, we've got traffic light, all sorts of different ways. One of those spidergrams where it shows you how you are on the little axes. There's lots of ways you can display the results. But what's really cool is depending on how they answer the questions, we can serve up different content. So we call this dynamic content. And the dynamic content basically tells people a different message based on how they scored. It can also do different offers based on how someone scored. So if someone scored low, you might give them a book. If someone scored medium, you might invite them to a workshop. If someone scored high, you might have a one-to-one -one with them. Um, so you can go through and you can say, this is how you did for the highest, this is how you did for the lowest. Right, so all of that's there. And then behind the scenes, it just asks you to tell the system what is a low score, what is a medium score, what is a high score. You can have as many tiers as you like, but the system wants to know, do you want to show this content for people who scored less than 20%, more than 20%, 30%? Where do you want to put the parameters for low, medium, or high? You can name those, whatever you want. You can have medium, medium, rare, and well done, whatever it is you want to have. But then you come up with a little bit of different content for each of the results. So if someone scores low, you might say, it looks like you've got some real work to do here. Here's three tips for getting started. If someone scores medium, you've got some strong foundations in place, but there's still some room to improve. Here's a video designed for taking your results up a level. You could give them a video that they only see if they scored medium. High, well done, you're strong in this area, and it's important to keep up the good work and fine tune your results. So they're going to see something that's relevant for them. Now, what's really cool is we can do this with video as well. So if you sit down in front of a camera and record a little video message for someone who scored low, don't feel discouraged. Everyone starts at, a, at this place. We can improve things really rapidly. You've got the most to gain. Let's work together. Hi, congratulations. Well done. You're doing really well. Like a Formula One car, if you can go one second faster, that's worth doing. Let's help you to go from good to great. Right, so you can do a different video depending on how people score. And you can just have those videos that play depending on, on what that is. If you want to get super sexy and sophisticated, you can actually create content that only appears based on certain questions. So if they and let's say there's one question in there and it says, do you have a small business, a medium-sized business or a large business? You can have just off that one question a special offer that says because you run a small business, we have a special small business workshop. Because you run a medium-sized company, we've got a medium-sized in-company workshop that we run. So you can actually tailor those offers. Our team were a little bit brave and a little bit bold yesterday, and they decided, you know what, uh, Stephen Bartlett's going to be there tomorrow. Let's build him a scorecard. So we said, are you dreaming of becoming a happy, sexy millionaire? We took all these images off his website. Sorry, Stephen. <laughs> right. Now, mind you, he's going to love this. We bought a beautiful leather case, and we've put all of his usernames and passwords in the book in there because we've got to give it to him in a happy, sexy way. So we've, we created, are you dreaming of becoming a happy, sexy millionaire? So it's based on an outcome. Take our quiz and assess your readiness for becoming one right now. And based on the learnings from your book, right, we'll, then we'll assess you. So what does it assess you on, right? What do you think a happy, sexy millionaire quiz would assess someone on? Of course, it's going to have three categories. Are you happy? Are you sexy? Are you a millionaire? So what we did is we just loaded up six or seven questions about happiness, six or seven questions about sexiness, and six or seven questions about wealth, money, and people go through and they answer the questions. So super simple questions. Do you regularly look for the opportunity to give or help others? On a scale of one to five, how do you look after your physical health? All we did really is we looked at the Kindle version of his book and we just looked through the, the, the table of contents and we just went through the table of contents and turned each one of the things that he recommends into a question. Do you do that thing? And then we just stuck it in the quiz. And then when you answer the questions, it says, thanks for taking the Happy Sexy Millionaire quiz. Not bad. Looks like you've got some really strong foundations and, and you could improve. And then it gives you custom recommendations on happiness, sexiness, and millionaire. Oh, Paul, Richard on our team took the test and got 29% for sexiness. Thank goodness he's well on his way to being a millionaire, though. It's so fabulous. And then 
based on how the score came out, the recommendation was the book. So you could make that recommendation a workshop, you could make it a one-to-one -one call, any of those sorts of things. You could join a Facebook group or a community. We would like, based on how you answered, we'd like to invite you into our secret WhatsApp group, right? Any of those things could be the call to action. So essentially we just said, hey, let's make the call to action the buy on Amazon. That's essentially how it works, end to end. And you need to come up with what is the next steps you want to have, right? So I'm curious, the next step could be a book, a workshop, or a one-to-one -one call. Who here would make the next step a, a book? You've got a book you'd recommend, right? Who would do a workshop? You'd invite people to a workshop as the next step. And who would do a one-to-one -one call as the next step, right? But only, here's the good thing, only if they're the right fit. Right, because what you really want is you want Cinderella clients. Cinderella clients, they're the clients that the shoe fits perfectly and you don't want to spend time with all the clients that are not Cinderella. So you want to ask a few questions that tell you whether someone is the right fit. Use the scorecard as a glass slipper and see if people are a good fit before you offer a one-to-one -one because your time will get busy if you just give one-to-ones to everybody. And the beauty is that you can tell this based on the data. So every single lead that comes in, you're going to see an overview, <clears throat> you'll see how all of the questions got answered. You'll see how all the questions got answered. You'll be able to have conversations with those Cinderella clients about the issues they most want to fix. And you'll get aggregate data. So once about 100 or so people start answering your questions, you'll have all this data that shows you as a whole how do people typically answer these questions. Now this is really cool because sometimes you'll discover there's areas that you didn't really think to create a product, but then there's a great opportunity. So for example, we ran a scorecard and 75% of people did not know their allowable cost per lead. They hadn't never calculated the allowable cost per lead. So then we said, oh, wait a second. First thing we need to do in the workshop, we hadn't even thought to do this, but we're going to put that straight into the workshop. Let's calculate the allowable cost per lead. And the data was the thing that told us this is what we should teach people because 75% of people don't have it. So by looking at the data, we could actually create some good ideas for product. And then promotion is the final thing. You've got to get people taking the scorecard. We've got a document called 29 Simple Ways to Promote Your Score. And, uh, and we've got a checklist, a dynamic checklist that you can go through. We've got lots and lots of blogs, 11 ways to promote your quiz on your website, how to use SEO to promote your quiz, how to convert quiz leads into sales. So all of that is actually on the website and for our clients and we've got a forum and all of that there as well. It's all covered in the new book, Scorecard Marketing. I kept that book nice and short. I deliberately wanted to make it short, sharp and focused. So you've all got a copy of that. But to give you some examples, this is a website called Elite Dating. They're an Australian website. They focus on matchmaking. And they used to get something like 80,000 viewers per month, but hardly anyone left their name and email. People would read the blogs and the articles about dating, but then they were anonymous. And then what they did is they just did a little pop-up, are you elite material? Find out how eligible you are in five minutes. He looks pretty elite material, doesn't he? He's got the swagger, he's got the pose. So what happened was actually quite incredible. Between 50 and 80 leads per day started coming in. So as soon as they put that on the website, suddenly they got 50 to 80 people every single day taking the scorecard and finding out whether they are elite material. And that became a massive business boost. We see a lot of people launching these on their social media. So if they've got a social media following, you might have lots of followers who have followed you for years, but now you're giving them something to actually go and do. Every day now, I see people promoting their scorecards on Facebook ads. So this is one of our clients who's doing a five-minute R&D tax credit eligibility scorecard. This is someone who's doing, is your brand irresistible? Take your scorecard and get a tailored report. And what people tell us all the time is this. They said, my old leads used to give me name, email, and location, but my new leads give me name, email, phone, location, likes, dislikes, desires, frustrations, buying criteria, motivations, fears, the whole shooting match. People are saying that for the same price as what their old leads would, would give them, they're getting so much more data. Here's a fun one. This company sells cabins in the woods. They call them bunkies. They're in Canada. And they went from three and a half million a year to seven million in one year, and the additional three and a half million was from scorecards. So it's a really simple one. Are you ready for the bunky life? Apparently Canadians, they know what that means and they go for it. 
And it just asks questions about are you comfortable building the thing? Do you want to do you want to do it for family reasons? Do you want to have you got a piece of land to put it on? All these things. And then it says, yeah, you're ready or you're not quite ready. You're going to need these things first. But they doubled their business in one year just by getting people to fill in these scorecards. Okay, so finishing up, how do you get started? So you've got some resources. You've all got the scorecard marketing book. You're the first ones to get this. We sent some out this week, but you're effectively the first people to get the scorecard marketing book. When you're ready to kick off, you set up an account. For most businesses, it's £29 a month. For bigger businesses, it's £89 a month if you're wanting thousands of leads. And there's no contract. You just turn it off whenever you want to turn it off. So if it stops working, you can just turn it off. Or if you think it's going to work, but it doesn't really work for you for any reason, you just turn it off. Once you've got an account, you just select some templates. You can come up with three or four or five different versions. You can ask people what they think. You can have a bit of fun with your team creating one of these. It's, you can have multiple people who are able to log into the account and see it. So you'll be able to check out our different templates. You'll be able to start with a template, drop in your own photos, your own images, your own text and copy and all that sort of stuff. Within about two hours, you'll have a ready-made marketing funnel that's ready to go live. Like you'll do a bit of testing with it and then you're ready to share the link and it goes live. And it's a proper marketing funnel. It's a landing page, it's a questionnaire, it's a results page. It's ready to go. You'll start getting a steady stream of qualified leads and that will be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You're going to have data-rich insights that you've never had before. You'll know exactly why each person wants to talk to you, what's driving their behavior. And the final thing I'll say is leads change lives. It sounds so corny, so cheesy to be saying leads change lives, but it's absolutely true. I tell you what, nothing quite is life-changing like having an influx of leads. If you had 10 leads, 20 leads, 30 leads a week coming through, your life would change. 100 leads a week, your life would absolutely change. Think back to that. 21-year-old Dan, who was sitting there with the newspaper, my life massively changed having one successful lead generation strategy to run ads in the paper each week. And that was a massive life changer. So leads change lives. Thank you so much for having me. All the best. Thank you.